One common ingredient found in many vegetarian meat alternatives is, can you guess? A soy. Or can I say textured soy protein, yeah. also yeah. known as TBP. Um, this, this is extensively used in so many, um, you know, meat-free burger patties and whatnot. Yeah. And the thing is, they contain a neurotoxin called hexane. And this is actually used in the uh, soy processing industry to divide the soybeans into fat and protein compounds because you really can't shape tofu into anything. You, you need it to you need it to be a certain uh, consistency to to make it into other things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if you're wondering how come this is sold in the markets, well, even the government lacks com comprehensive research in this area. So this leaves all of us consumers in the dark about the potential health risks, the risks of these products. However, I'd like to add that, do you really need a research to tell you that a certain chemical is not safe for consumption? I mean, come on, let's not be blind idiots, right? everyone hi everyone how are you all so um regarding the previous episode episode number 44 before we get started i just wanted to tell all of y'all that that we had pre-recorded and posted it yeah it's on bulldog route and uh, it's just an amazing herb to talk about and i was a bit uh, gabby in that podcast but uh, it's something very close to my heart and so, you will find it extremely useful. Yes. <laughs> so the, the episode has been posted, of course, on all the major platforms, Spotify and all the audio platforms. However, it's still I, I still have to post them on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, elsewhere, wherever you are listening from on in the video version of yes. it. Yes. Um, all right. So just a few up, uh, updates or some developments that have been happening on our end that um, we would like to just uh, share with you all. So one is the project that we have been telling you all about, which is a subscription plan that we have announced a while ago. Yeah, and we have been tirelessly working on it to make it the best and the the most productive and the the finest information that we can present to you all. I mean, whatever we have, we have on hand, uh, since so many years uh, studying and knowing about different uh, ailments and everything, uh, we are sharing all this in this uh, subscription plan. That yeah, and our goal has always been and is, is always will be to provide you all the information that you can, practical information or theoretical information. Yeah, something that's more tactile. Exactly, that can help you turn around your health Either this information be available in, in the for the smallest free. or even the biggest ways. Exactly. And and not just your health, actually your entire life, your mindset, everything in, in order to achieve that abundance, that level of abundance, yeah. not just in wellness, but even in life in itself, You're compressing not just all that knowledge that we have amassed in the last nine, 10 years, but also all the experiences that we have gone through that can be helpful for you all as well. And so as I was saying, so to to make this information available to all of y'all either at a for free or at a very uh, at an extremely um, affordable, affordable price, price. Um, and free ca is from uh, the podcast the itself. Podcast itself yeah. Because uh, here we are obviously again uh, interacting with y'all um, and sharing whatever we've got, but on um, subscription it would be a bit more in detail. And uh, a lot in detail. In yes, <laughs> and with remedies as well. So here we do mention about that, but it's only uh, mentioning more. But on the uh, on the subscription, it's going to be in uh, in much ex more, extreme yeah. detail, like with all the options, everything possible, and uh, holding nothing back. That's exactly. what we can say. Exactly. Nothing is going to be held back. 
you're going to have yeah. everything and the second project is uh, we are beginning a academy institute school whatever you can call it and we haven't really decided on that yeah. um this is for teaching for those uh, professionals out there or even like no, someone who's who doesn't want to be a professional in this field but really wants to learn the in and outs of how things happen and more in depth to to deal with it more in depth so we are starting that as well and the first thing that i am already working on is creating the syllabus for uh, functional medicine the education that i have received in the past 3 years that i am compiling and just taking out the core in the core pieces of information the very important pieces of information of whatever i learned in the last 3 years and compressing and compiling it into just a few lectures and to make these again to make these lectures available at a very um a low price for all of you all and apart from this uh uh we have been i have been working since you all know i don't know whether you know or not but i also have a small web agency with my friend uh, of course this is also um, to help other healthcare practitioners uh, in in uh, for them to think with things like web development and reaching other Uh, reaching their clients and all of those things so i have been working on um, our website we are shifting our website from befit1.com uh, to wellnessandbeyond.es which aligns more with what we do and to just cut out the confusion because there has been a lot of confusion so and so with so much in hand there is so much our hands are like literally full and that's why we uh, also decided that we can it's not about us deciding but the only thing that we can um, Uh, afford to do at the moment is one episode a week yeah. so at least for the next few weeks or months we will be shifting to only one episode on a week which will be aired live every friday yeah. uh, we still haven't fixed up a time yet but we will be posting all of those things and everything will be very much clearly available so apart from that let's get started with today's episode and um, starting with let's dive deeper into keto diet which has gained a lot of popularity over the years and to the time where it's just off the charts at the moment like every second person you know I will be exaggerated but every <laughs> every uh five out of 10 people either has tried keto or is interested in keto or is already doing keto yeah i mean uh, obviously but and why why are we doing keto in the first place to lose weight yeah and for symptom relief mm-hmm. right but then it's not without its own consequences because um one thing that's crucial to mention is the role of the liver and bile secretion because we also have to digest fats and it's a high fat diet at the end of the day so without a proper functioning liver uh, we cannot do keto it's yeah. just next to impossible i mean you would be gaining weight the very reason you were actually using this diet for your own good and let's not wait let's not forget the thyroid function yes of course i That's mean uh, long term keto dieting can lead to down regulated uh, down regulation of thyroid function which can have a l- whole lot of the consequences as well i mean your know. because your thyroid function is again uh, connected to your endocrine system yes right so it's also impacting your other hormones exactly yeah like your uh, estrogen your testosterone so hpatg axis exactly and and it's not just keto when we talk about uh, any low carb diet for instance there's one more thing that comes with it because um, of constantly dipping blood sugar levels due to low carb intake this this can trigger stress hormones which yeah. in the like in the long term can really leave the person depleted yeah then and again cortisol too much of cortisol comes into the picture exactly high stress too much cortisol and um, more fatigue your adrenals are weakened yeah so and again that is also not just the blood sugar it's impacting it's also impacting your uh, other systems as well yeah and your liver is not working well exactly and it's completely taking out of the equation the flexibility of the metabolism that's true right yeah um see when a diet is used therapeutically like in cancer for example keto yeah. diets are used that yeah. is that is fine because it's used for a short term even even in alzheimers even in alzheimers or even when people have certain uh, sensitivities or stuff food sensitivities yeah. uh, or a gut dysbiosis mm-hmm. i mean there are a lot of diets but the point is um as long as it's done in the short term for a 
for a specific cause it is fine but nothing should be made it's impactful yeah but then uh, yeah it shouldn't be longer than uh yeah the set time right exactly so it's it's actually like putting a band aid on a wound without addressing the underlying mm-hmm. issue yeah that's true and obviously i mean uh it's like you are eliminating an entire food group like carbohydrates and that indeed uh can lead to some improvement but um even like for instance if there's a specific carb source that was causing issues with your gut removing it can result in some symptom relief feeling a bit better overall it's like you have a knee pain and uh, you're trying to not use the staircase because then uh, if you use it then you will feel more pain yeah so you're just not using it so it you won't be bothered by it but um i think there's a big distinction uh when it comes to temporary relief and uh, from symptoms and genuine healing so while of course cutting uh, certain food groups may provide immediate relief um there are long term consequences on hand that we've got to also take uh, into consideration and apart from this there are people who come and argue about things like but our body does not need carbs it's not essential well our body sure i mean our body can can make its own carbs uh and just because uh, of that people think it's not essential but the point is that first of all just because our body can give up carbs on its own does it mean that uh, for survival for survival because it is essential in a way so does it mean that we keep doing it again and again i mean sure i mean mm. it's not ideal right uh, for example certain parts of our body like our red blood cells brain muscles especially during workouts um uh, muscles need glycogen carbs right they come from carbs to do their job and they can't use so at that point of time when you're weight lifting or when you're doing any kind of uh, strenuous activity or resistant like any anything that involves a resistance of muscles or the use of muscles you need uh, you can't use fat right off the bat you need uh, your muscle glycogen you need your yeah. you, you you can't just you need that gush of energy yeah right so obviously um of course it it also has its own energetics right carbon bio photon light yes. emissions are also there there is so much more to food that we are not even <laughs> like considering over here that's true we are just talking about macros and nutrients but there is so much more yeah i mean uh, also according to ayurveda food can be categorized into warming cooling or even neutral when it uh, when it comes to their energetics and um, it's really needed for balancing our own energy mm-hmm. energy field so uh, for instance warming foods like garlic and ginger they are just amazing impactful for stimulating your digestion they are carminative so again aiding and helping in your gas and bloating but on the other hand we have cucumbers which are uh, and mint which uh, can help with reducing your inflammation and also giving you that hydration helping your kidneys to just settle down a bit uh, even uh, when it's too sunny outside we want to have these hydrating uh, food groups which is like it's like nature is not just outside it's also inside us right yeah so we are accordingly um, choosing our food based on uh, the season and the environment so it's such a fascinating uh, topic but it's so crucial you know so at the end of the day food is more than just macros and nutrients yeah and regardless of whatever diet you follow you just have to make sure of one thing and that's eat foods which are whole natural and unprocessed from farm to the table and ideally organic and this is something that people on i mean know, it's we keep reiterating that and everybody not just us everyone keeps reiterating the same but uh, to really understand why is that other reasons that we are talking this yeah today, we are discussing about it. again this is not comprehensive in any way we are yeah. just trying to give you uh, we are just t- trying to pinpoint certain uh, really important things though there are a lot of other things that we can cover but the point is not to tell you the cons of diets or the pros of diets the point is to make you realize 
which direction you need to go and that decision doesn't have to come from a, like it's not us telling you what to do it's you realizing what you need to do exactly and so when i was uh, as i was talking about uh, you know vegan diets the one thing that you know uh, people who follow these diets they stray away from is is things like first of all it's not black and white and every diet people have their own versions so it's always best to let go of the labels and eat what resonates with you intuitively in fact there are a few things that are uh, concerning that has nothing to do with the diet itself but the choices people tend to make to stay within the the paradigm and the rules and the regulations of diet that's yep. that's generally the problem yep and of course you know when we talk about vegan diets one thing that often comes up is the reliance on uh, meat and milk alternatives yeah so what's concerning is that uh, many of these alternatives they are highly processed mm. and may not be as healthy as they seem because at their core they actually uh, gmos or uh, highly processed using many chemicals and additives so i mean it can be extremely deceiving and yeah. especially when we look at cultured meat it's important to understand its production process that no one looks at it relies like in in this case it relies on fetal bovine serum or fbs uh, as a, a growth medium uh, which which is derived from the blood of cow fetuses i don't want to get into the details but it's it's a sobering reminder that even alternatives marketed as cruelty free may have hidden ethical and environmental costs i mean after all these these are corporate industries these are corporations they wouldn't think about what's best for you yeah. they are they are all about extreme manipulation in order to extract as much profit as possible yeah it's true and and yeah. consumers deserve to know this that's true that what they are putting in their bodies and obviously um, there can be and we do know there are impact on our, it's it's impacting our health in so many different ways and let's not just also forget about the facts uh in these plant based alternatives because many of them contain unhealthy fats such as canola oil which can also contribute to metabolic issues and chronic diseases so it's a reminder that when it comes to food choices we need to look beyond the labels and marketing claims and understanding the ingredients and production processes is really crucial if you're actually going to buy that packaged food and all the all this is just informing us to make better decisions and on that note one common ingredient found in many vegetarian meat alternatives is can you guess a uh, soy or oh, can i say textured soy protein yeah. also known as tbp um this this is extensively used in so many uh, you know meat free burger patties and what not yeah. and the thing is they contain a neurotoxin called hexane and this is actually used in the uh, soy processing industry to divide the soy beans into fat and protein compound because you really can't shape tofu into anything you, you need it to you need it to be a certain uh, consistency to to make it into other things yeah right yep. and if you're wondering how come this is sold in the markets well even the government lacks com comprehensive research in this area so this leaves all of us consumers in the dark about the potential health risks risks of these products however i'd like to add that do you really need a research to tell you that a certain chemical is not safe for consumption i mean come on let's not be blind idiots right <laughs> and we also even we haven't uh, started even speaking about uh, the effects of food that we eat on our uh, how, on our microbiome exactly. how it's affecting our microbiome and how our bacteria is interacting with that information and what metabolites they are producing um, after feeding on it yeah so um, so that 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 is if it doesn't kill them in the case of foods which are highly processed but um, of course because they are not with less toxins right exactly and i i completely forgot to mention this uh, so food is beyond nutrients 
right? It's it's not just macros and nutrients because like, again, as I say this, that an apple has more than 500 constituents. Yeah. And how many do we know? Or how many come in uh, behind a food label? Like, yeah. I think comparatively, you don't, we hardly know anything. We still yeah. have a lot to discover. And this is on the physical level. Even food is made up of atoms and molecules. Everything is. Everything is energy at the end of the day. So as you also pointed out previously, as what Ayurveda says, that there is a certain energy. Think of this. Think of the food you eat as an energy interaction. Your yeah. energy and the in, in energy of the foods. And also there is another thing. This is something new and I'm also learning about, but at the end of the day, what we need is a certain energy wave light spectrum. This is what we need. Our energy body needs certain energy sources and um, not to get too, into too much of detail, but at the end of the day, the vegetables, the, the animals outside in the environment, they are absorbing these uh, light waves right? These uh, sunlight in short. Ultraviolet. Yeah. Yes. And this is what we eat. This is what our body consumes uh, at a level where we are not yet really have reached to that level to study it. Mm -hmm. So there is, as I said, biophoton light as well that's involved. Like if, uh, for example, there was a coriander that was pictured with certain special I devices. Love, I love, I love coriander. <laughs> amazing for detoxification. And amazing for wrinkling as well. Yeah. Anti-wrinkle. <laughs> yeah. I think this this what many people would love. But any which ways, I, as I was pointing out that uh, it's it's the the light emission of the coriander. It was pictured with uh, photographed with some special equipment. And even after the coriander was a small leaf of coriander, and it was uh, even after it was cut into two pieces, okay. the other half side, which was discarded, still had the biophoton light emission. Oh wow! So Amazing. this is something we are not really looking into. Mm -hmm. We are still looking at things which are very much on the physical level, and even the things that we are starting to learn, like epigenetics. What does food have? mRNA, Information. Yes. Mess messenger RNA molecules. Yeah. All foods have messenger RNA molecules, and these are what communicates with our DNA That's right. on the physical level, at least. There's more going on in other levels, and this is what leads to the activation or deactivation of certain uh, genetics, and then we have an outcome of certain illnesses or not, based yeah. on what we uh, what we get from our ancestors, from our parents, inherit, yeah. and. Um, so even beyond these factors, when we get to look at food in a way that is, um, it's more than what just meets the eye. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we have to think when we are putting any food in the mouth, what are we bringing in beyond what the nutrients and the macros tell us? And some other pitfalls that we can talk about when vegans for example, or even keto, people who do keto. Okay, I mean, sugar is the enemy, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not sure what's the trend right now, but a few years ago, like sucralose, aspartame, and all these things were like a yeah. diet cokes. Diet coke, yeah. It's still, I mean, people do have that. Yeah, I thought people are waking up to that, but I really hope that people are waking up to that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's become the norm, but that's not necessarily the the ethical thing but that's how it is and that's our job to actually uh, make you all realize that you have to stay away because then again aspartame and uh, sucralose these things can really impact your neurological health so someone who's doing a keto diet for example and they cannot consume sugars any form of carbs or any form of sugars then they opt for these um, these types of sweeteners which yeah. are artificial sweeteners and additives and sometimes they really go heavy on it. That's true. Or, or there are other pitfalls. For example, uh, people on keto, they can't uh, use grains or yeah. other flowers. So they go for things like almond flowers. Oh, wow. That's high in oxalates. High in oxalates. That's really affecting the kidneys. Yeah. And uh, it's also disrupting the mineral balance. I mean, you can't consume nuts in such a big. Yeah. But only quantity. one nut I think you can consume, which is not a nut. It's coconut milk. Oh yeah, coconut is that's it's just amazing. fabulous. 
it's high in fats exactly yeah, yeah. the keto driven food but uh, it's got its mcts medium chain triglycerides yeah so that's again helping and impacting your nerves you really don't need to consume mct you just have coconut for god's sake exactly why do you want to isolate something so it's amazing yeah no, i mean I, i really don't understand just going out out of context a little but that's the whole point to teach you something right i mean to share something with you an insight with you why do us do we humans need to isolate everything from everything yeah why can't we just consume the entire freaking food which is what we get from okay. nature what do we do can we share that with people okay, like yeah. how do you make your uh, amazing ice cream coconut ice cream or we just get the coconut cream yes the whipping cream the whipping cream yes and uh, so it's basically can... the pulp of the coconut in the the yes. coconut which is uh, blended in a way yeah. with the uh, water yeah that's it and what what else do you put in the in the chocolate coconut ice cream uh yeah cacao powder yes and just a little bit of coconut sugar look we are not running away from sugar and the point yeah. is that sugar is not bad it's yeah. the quantity that this that it's everything that's deterministic of how um how things are how your body is dealing with it basically yeah. is it in excess because if you really go to see uh, even in the olden times like 70 years ago or so i mean during our grandparents grandparents time they used to make cakes out of butter milk sugar, sugar flour, flour. Yeah. okay what has changed is now uh sugar is the enemy sugar has become the enemy so people are using uh, alternates uh, sugar alternates uh, yeah. so artificial sweeteners and of course in in replacement of sugar especially when you buy cakes from outside what you get is uh, uh there are glucose syrups rice glucose syrups what not yes right and this this is uh this is no way even near sugar comparatively yeah. okay flours have been replaced with gmo flours gmo flours which are extremely finely ground yeah. now that that also makes a difference it's not about consuming the flour yeah but it's about how is a what kind of processing like previously flours the grains used to be ground with these big heavy stones so they were hand milled basically hand milled and the the how uh, fine they were even not that fine they were yeah. i think a slightly denser granules yeah. a little more bigger and this didn't this never used to go in our stomach and form like in you know, a very glutinous glue yeah and it stick inside it sits in our stomach for a long time so that's a uh, food stagnation yeah and now suddenly we have colors in the picture artificial colors we yeah. don't know where they say naturally derived or naturally whatsoever well it's no it's nothing close to natural Yeah, they have true. their own legal coding that they use and the point that we are going from here is that you have to not just look at what's been provided you have to look at how it's being processed like okay let's say you might get a product in the supermarket that has three ingredients yeah. and they look extremely clean but they are processed like for example let's take meats for example especially when we go into carnivore diets which is one not one of the topics that we chose for today but let's just briefly talk about carnivore diets as well so with carnivore diets uh uh this they they are fed uh antibiotics a lot of hormones a uh, lot of things they are also fed gmo corn and what not and that's one thing and the second thing is uh these uh, processed meats or daily meats yeah and on the face of it it will look extremely healthy right what's in it's just meat it's just yeah. meat and it's, but the point is the way it's processed the way it's processed does not make it healthy and i could have gone but uh, i could have gone ahead with uh, more details on it but maybe we can leave it uh, leave it out for another episode because we are running out of time as usual uh so um anything you would like to add for today uh, what what is I, the i think we summarized conclusion? it well we summarized it well Yeah so the if we need to conclude on whether these diets vegan or keto or any diet whether it's healthy or not it absolutely depends, depends on what you pick and choose exactly, to eat exactly intuitively and and how a message to y'all would be do pick labels just go with what's natural what feels intuitive what's been in your your family like since yeah. generations what your community has been eating because pick out local foods seasonal foods 
all these things do matter the kind of quality of foods you're going for organic foods mm. because remember pest laden some of the foods totally doesn't as, as well we have mentioned it quite a lot of times these foods are at least these foods you should shift away from yeah uh so that's it for this episode we'll be seeing you all in the next episode next week on friday with another interesting topic until then we wish you all an amazing weekend and uh, be happy and be healthy bye, bye.